Hello and welcome to Rao's IES DNS session. Today we shall discuss the Hindu Delhi edition dated 15 December 2022. We shall take up articles important for civil service examination and discuss them as per the demand of the exam. The articles that we shall discuss are these. But before we begin, a quick announcement. Like every Thursday, today as well, we have posted a question on eLearn platform from the DNS. The purpose is to enhance your learning experience from the DNS sessions. This particular question is from the DNS dated 13 December 2022. So please show some spirit, write the answer to this question. If you have less content, if you feel like, you can go visit the DNS, read the notes and attempt writing answer to this question. But please do. If you post the answer by tomorrow, you'll get it evaluated by faculties at Rao's IAS. There is an article in today's newspaper on nuclear fusion, understanding the fusion energy breakthrough announced by the US. Scientists at the United States in National Ignition Facility. This is at the Lawrence Livermore Laboratory in California. There, the scientists have for the first time achieved a net gain in energy from a nuclear fusion reaction. And this is being seen as a big step forward in the decade-old endeavor to master a technology that is considered to be the most dependable source of energy in the future. We have been trying our hands on nuclear fusion reaction since 1950s, but still it is considered that use of nuclear energy at commercial scale will only be possible by 2035 to 2040. Fusion is a powerful way of harnessing energy. There is immense amount of energy within the nucleus of an atom. Fusion reaction makes the sun and all the stars shine and radiate so much of energy. But the fusion reaction is only carried by great difficulty. The fusion reaction happens at the core of the sun and the other stars. It's very, very difficult to carry out in the laboratory setup. The National Ignition Facility has been doing experiment for quite some time and in 2021, they achieved a gain of 0.72. Gain here means the ratio of energy that comes as an output to the energy that has been required to carry out the reaction. Gain of 0.72 means that only 72% of energy that goes as input to carry out the reaction comes out as output of nuclear fusion reaction. And the physicist says to be able to use nuclear fusion energy at commercial scale, this gain must increase from here to around 100. So it's a long way to go from here. Nuclear fusion, as you understand from the term, is combination of several smaller nuclei into one larger nucleus. And when this happens, not only the larger nucleus is created, huge amount of energy is released. This is kind of opposite to nuclear fission, where a heavier nucleus disintegrates and smaller nuclei are produced. Bringing two nucleus together is a big deal because you know that nucleus is positively charged. So naturally they will repel each other and to overcome this repulsion requires huge amount of energy. That energy comes at very high temperature. The temperature that is required to carry out nuclear fusion on Earth is 10 times that is there in the core of the sun. Because of huge mass of the sun, the pressure at the core of the sun is also very high. So at that huge pressure, whatever temperature is inside the core of the sun, that is sufficient to carry out nuclear fusion. But if you want to carry out nuclear fusion on Earth, you do not have that intense pressure which is there at the core of the sun. So you require higher amount of temperature. Fusion reaction is carried out by bringing hydrogen or other lighter isotope in the state of plasma. Plasma is a fourth state of matter as you understand and I hope you also know the fifth state of matter. When hydrogen or its other isotopes come in the plasma state, then laser beams or magnetic fields are used to bring them together in order for them to get fused together. And huge amount of energy is required to produce these laser beams and magnetic fields. And so far, the fusion reaction has not been sustained so much that sufficient energy is released henceforth to compensate the huge amount of energy that, that goes into causing the reaction to happen. I'll give you a little bit basic of nuclear fusion reaction before we start up things which are more important for your mains exam. That is the significance of nuclear fusion energy and the initiatives that Government of India has taken in this regard. See, you will know that there are four fundamental interactions in this universe. They are gravity, electromagnetism, weak nuclear force and strong nuclear force. 
In the Newtonian physics, gravity happens because of mass and electromagnetism is interaction of charge. These nuclear interactions are neither because of mass nor because of charge. They are because of the nature of nucleons, the nuclear materials, the nuclear particles. Inside the nucleus, you know that there are two kinds of particles. One is called as proton, which are positively charged. And the other are neutrons, which are electromagnetically neutral. They also have very tiny amount of mass. But force because of mass is gravity and because of charge is electromagnetic force. But apart from force by the virtue of mass or charge, there are other kind of forces called as weak nuclear force and strong nuclear force. Weak nuclear force is used in nuclear decay, in radioactive reactions, where one particle decays into other particles. And when one particle starts decaying into other particle, that decay, that conversion of one particle to other particle, maybe alpha particle to beta particle, that is caused by weak nuclear force because that change happens within the nucleus. And the fourth kind of force, strong nuclear force, is the strongest among all. And this force holds the nuclear particles together. You must know of the analogy that if the atom is the football field, then the nucleus is only of the size of a football. And all these nuclear particles are so densely, immensely densely packed. So you understand, thing which is holding it together must be a very, very powerful force. And that is called as a strong nuclear force. So you are dealing with strong nuclear force in nuclear fission as well as fusion reaction. And that's why the amount of energy that is released in these reactions are immensely high. When you burn coal, the reaction is this carbon reacting with oxygen to form carbon dioxide or sometimes carbon monoxide. Here there is no change in the nucleus of carbon atom or oxygen atom. It's a simple chemical reaction but still it releases heat. Burning of coal releases energy but when it comes to nuclear reaction the amount of energy which is released is immensely more because in these reactions you are dealing with electromagnetic force. Carbon getting attached with oxygen, that is kind of carbon atom holding together with oxygen atom because of charge. And electromagnetism compared to strong nuclear force stands nowhere in terms of intensity. So nuclear reactions are very powerful. They release huge amount of energy. See, this is a question that came in 2013. Gravity is the strongest of the four. This is the incorrect statement. Gravity is the weakest. The strongest is a strong nuclear force. See the other statements, electromagnetism acts only on particles with an electric charge. Gravity is because of mass and electromagnetism is because of charge. So correct statement. Weak nuclear force causes radioactivity. I told you weak nuclear force causes the conversion of one particle into another. Hence radioactivity is possible only because of weak nuclear force. Strong nuclear force holds protons and neutrons inside the nucleus of an atom. And that's what it does. It's absolutely correct statement. Now let me show you a graph of binding energy. Although it may seem to be a little technical, but trust me, we'll spend only two minutes here, but it will give you good satisfaction in the overall understanding of the topic. Binding energy, as you can figure out from the term, is the energy that binds the nucleons together, the nuclear particle, protons and neutrons. In the isotope of hydrogen, deuterium, there are two protons. And in tritium, there are three protons. And you see, binding energy of deuterium is considerably less than that of tritium. And when two hydrogen atoms fuses together, it, it leads to formation of helium nuclei. And the binding energy of helium nuclei is substantially more than that of hydrogen's isotopes. That means if the hydrogen are fused together and helium atom is formed, then huge amount of energy is going to be released. If somehow you do the same with the helium atom resulting in the formation of other heavier nuclei, you are not going to get so much of energy. So hydrogen atoms, they are best suited for nuclear fusion because it releases huge amount of energy and there are other reasons as well which I am going to tell you shortly. But first bring your attention here. This is uranium. Uranium is used in nuclear fission. In fission, the heavier nuclei is broken down into smaller ones. And when you break it down to smaller ones, the energy difference right up till here, iodine, is not so much. But still, the lighter ones, they are more stable because of higher binding energy. So still, it's a profitable deal. This amount of energy will be released. But this compared to this, if I ask you, more energy is released in nuclear fission or nuclear fusion. So you get the obvious answer. Nuclear fusion is going to release much more energy than nuclear fission to the tune of 3, 4 to 5 times more. But it is not easy to carry out nuclear fusion. 
because when you try to bring the nuclei together one nucleus is positively charged the other one is also positively charged so initially you have to cross the barrier there will be electrostatic repulsion because of like charges like charges repel each other opposite charges attract each other so there's going to be huge amount of repulsion and you have to overcome this repulsion first meaning you have to do a kind of investment in terms of energy if you heat it up more then this barrier can overcome the electrostatic repulsive force between two protons is around 400 kilo electron volt we'll not get into it but i must tell you that it's easy to do a little bit of theoretical calculation of thermodynamics to figure out at what temperature these two protons are going to come together overcoming their electrostatic repulsive barrier and that happens at 3 into 10 raised to the power 9 kelvin and the interior of the sun at the core the temperature is 1.5 into 10 raised to the power 7 this is of the tune of 100 times less than the temperature required but then the sun has huge amount of mass and excessive pressure inside the core so the pressure compensate for lower temperature but that pressure is not available on earth so you need to have higher temperature than that that is available at the core of the sun now imagine the difficulty which is there in carrying out nuclear fusion reaction but once you are able to carry it out virtually most of the problem on earth will be solved you have huge amount of energy then there is no dearth of electricity there is no environmental pollution unlike nuclear fission there is no radioactive waste you have helium which is inert gas you can carry out water purification as much as you want with the filters so there will be no dearth of drinking water there is no dearth of energy crisis the war conflict confrontation competition because of energy resource that won't be there you can do rural electrification you can carry out balanced regional growth agriculture can become more efficient the possibility is huge that is why we are looking forward so much towards making it possible from the perspective of mains exam two things becomes very important whether it's nanotechnology biotechnology it supercomputer quantum mechanics blockchain anything and the initiative that the government of India has taken to promote it, apart from the challenges. So let's quickly see what are the significance of the nuclear fusion energy. First of all, it will provide us abundant amount of energy to the scale that humanity has never seen before. It releases nearly 10 million times more energy than a chemical reaction that happens when we burn coal, oil or gas. A nuclear fusion reaction releases 4 to 5 times more energy the nuclear fission reaction. Nuclear fusion reactions are very sustainable. The fuel that you are going to use in nuclear fusion, they are inexhaustible. What do you use in nuclear fusion? Hydrogen or its isotopes deuterium and tritium. Deuterium is naturally present in water and it can easily be fetched by distilling all forms of water. And tritium can be produced by a nuclear fusion reaction fusing neutrons with lithium. So no problem of fuel availability that we have with fossil fuels. There's no problem of environmental damage. There is no greenhouse gas emission. There is no harmful emission of any toxins that invariably comes with fossil fuels. The byproduct here is helium and helium is an inert non-toxic gas. Also, unlike nuclear fusion reaction, there is no long-lived radioactive waste. From the perspective of nuclear safety, there are two things. First, in terms of nuclear bombs, it is less risky because fusion reaction does not employ fissile material like uranium and plutonium. Although there is a caveat here, I must tell you that China and US, they are in the process of development of fusion bombs. But that would require altogether different kind of technologies and it is still a distant thing. At the present technological development level, nuclear bombs cannot be made using fusion reaction. And also in terms of safety of nuclear power plant, nuclear fusion reactors are safer option. Because it's very difficult to reach and maintain which are necessary for fusion reaction. That is why in 2021, they succeeded in attaining the gain of 0.72. But in the next three consecutive attempts, they failed to reproduce the same gain. So with the slightest of change in the reaction condition, the necessary conditions it gets disturbed so that also means that after we have learned and mastered to produce the necessary requisite condition if any disturbance happens in the nuclear chamber the reaction automatically will come at halt so nuclear blast that happens in nuclear fission reactors 
it won't happen here apart from that if you talk of significance there's a sig- there's significance in international relation countries come together to cooperate for new upcoming technologies which, which is also the case in space technology robotics nanotechnology biotechnology com- quantum computers and any other new emerging technology international thermonuclear experimental reactor itr is a cooperating platform of which india also is a part and it is trying to develop world's largest tokamak tokamak is the reactor that will carry out the nuclear fusion reaction china and us they are also the member of itr but they are having their individual effort which includes countries like uk as well uk also is doing independent work in the area of nuclear fusion china and united states they see the future in nuclear fusion also from the strategic perspective they are trying hard to develop nuclear bombs based on fusion reaction but the international collaboration for nuclear fusion is iter once you start working on new technologies the ancillary benefit in terms of development of the innovative ecosystem so whenever you're writing significance of any new technology you must add up this point of diffusion of innovation or development of research ecosystem you must already have studied this in the context of space exploration that helium 3 it is found in abundance on the surface of moon and countries like china are very interested in sending robotic mission to moon basically for mineral exploration that includes helium 3 once we learn to do nuclear fusion for hydrogen which still seems to be very hard job we can also carry out nuclear fusion for helium in the broader significance you must also add the aspects of society education health social justice because with electricity you can really do a lot agriculture can be made more efficient the benefit of it that can be brought to rural region we can have rural development we can have balanced regional growth you can keep on extending the significance try to make it as broad as you can upsc in 2016 has asked this question india is an important member of international thermonuclear experimental reactor if this experiment succeeds what is the immediate advantage for india the answer here is option d it can build fusion reactors for power generation and with this power generation you can actually do a lot the scientists in india they have identified nuclear fusion as the sustainable source of energy for future way back in 1950s there was atoms for peace meeting in geneva and dr homi j bhaba saw the future in energy coming from thermonuclear fusion and that set the stage for india to participate in the researches based on nuclear fusion india has two important institution in this regard the most important one is institute for plasma research this is in gandhinagar and hot plasma project at the saha institute of nuclear physics in kolkata the institute for plasma research it operates two tokamaks the nuclear reactors the chamber for nuclear fusion one is called as aditya the other one is a steady state tokamak one steady state in terms of any reaction chemical or nuclear reaction is a state after the reaction has stabilized that is called as a steady state so in india we have two reactors aditya steady state tokamak one aditya is already operational since 1989 and it was obviously the first indigenously designed and built tokamak of the country we have been able to make it operate for 0.4 seconds certain nuclear facilities in some european countries they also have achieved for few minutes you see but the thing is that the gain meaning you have to produce more energy compared to the energy that you are consuming that has not been achieved till now steady state tokamak 1 is still at the stage of development so it's not that we have done too much in this area but apart from domestic research initiatives we also are important member of iter project institute of plasma research ipr this body represents india at iter project institute of plasma research is part of department of atomic energy india has been very active participant in iter project we have delivered cryosats cryosats are essential for cooling mechanism in the nuclear reactor we have provided the shielding materials you see these things we are already doing for gaganyaan project we also have our own mission for nuclear fission reaction so that's what happens one area of research create benefits in other areas as well india has advanced in cryo engineering for the development of gslv mark 3 
So for cooling water systems, cryogenic systems, and also for heating systems, ion, cyclotron, radio frequency, heating systems, these are the areas in which India has been participating and we are supplying equipments to ITER. This is the article from page number one of today's newspaper, The Hindu. Hooch tragedy claims several lives in dry Bihar. Bihar is a state with prohibition. Hooch in colloquial terms means spurious alcohol. And there have been many cases from various parts of India, from the Desi alcohol, there has been loss of many lives. In some cases, there is severe eyesight damage. In this context, we are going to do a case study from the perspective of GS Paper 4. I'll take up this case that UPSC has asked in the year 2018. In a state where prohibition is in force, you are recently appointed as the superintendent of police of a district notorious for illicit distillation of liquor. The illicit liquor leads to many deaths, reported and unreported, and, and causes a major problem for the district authorities. The approach till now has been to view it as a law and order problem and tackle it accordingly. Raids, arrests, police cases, and criminal trials all these had only limited impact. The problem remains as serious as ever. Your inspections show that parts of the district where the distillation flourishes are economically, industrially, and educationally backward. Agriculture is badly affected by poor irrigation facilities. Frequent clashes among communities gave boost to illicit distillation. No major initiatives had taken place in the past either from the government side or from social organizations to improve the lot of the people. Now the question is which new approach would you adopt to bring the problem under control? See the case highlights the importance of persuasion for attitudinal and behavioral change among people. It shows that just administrative machinery working for maintaining law and order is not sufficient to develop value-laden society. The details mentioned in the case calls for change in strategy in the governance of illicit liquor distillation. Rather than punishing the unacceptable behavior, state must target determinants of behavior. What are the determinants of behavior? The circular flow diagram tells you where does the behavior come from. Behavior comes from attitude. Attitude is the tendency to behave in a particular manner in a given situation. So if you are not controlled by external situation, you will be controlled internally. And the tendency to behave in a particular manner is attitude. So if you're offered butterscotch ice cream and you always take it, so you have strongly positive attitude towards butterscotch ice cream. But if it is chilling cold outside, then the situation may change your behavior. Attitude is developed by values. Value is anything that you value. In this paper, values are implicitly ethical values. Profitability is also an important value in the realms of economics. But here, when we say value, those are ethical values. Values are developed when our core belief gets combined by emotion. So if you know something, meaning if you have a knowledge of something, which is part of your cognition, and if you are emotionally attached with that thing, only then it becomes your value. So the case asks you, what new approach will you adopt? Law and order is the external situation. And maintaining law and order meaning you are controlling the external situation. But internal to citizens are attitude, values, emotions, cognitions. So the new approach would be to control these things, to hit here to change the behavior. And apart from this, the external situation can also be changed, for instance, to increase the economic growth, improve the agriculture, bring in the industries, improve the ease of doing business so that more economic opportunities creates more harmony in society. And the youth get busy. They indulge into more productive activities rather than nuisance like this. So basically, you'll have to touch upon these internal things which largely remain untouched in traditional method of governance. And also externally, you have to improve the situation, meaning the economic and political scenarios must also be improved. In your syllabus, when you have attitude, the last part of the section is social influence and persuasion. These are the methods to change the attitude. People drink mostly by their attitude. If they're happy, they feel like drinking. Sad, feel like drinking. Depressed, feel like drinking. 
attitude is the tendency to behave in a particular way so in any emotional state you have the tendency to drink and to change attitude you must resort to social influence and persuasion in your syllabus you also have ethical governance and this includes whole lot of thing good governance is also included in ethical governance so if the area remains underdeveloped as has been mentioned in the case that's a case of poor implementation of the concept of ethical governance so externally the governance must improve and internally to change the cognition emotion value and attitude you must adopt social influence and persuasion so how do we do these two things for social influence you can use social institutions like family school panchayat to instill dignity and self worth among people drinking as a habit should not be socially accepted like other terrible habits like spitting on the road side or open defecation these things are prevalent because it is socially not considered to be so unethical and in the technique of persuasion you have to understand that you have to hit both cognition the information that you impart to people for example you can make reports and highlight the hazards of drinking but that is only information you have to find ways and means to club emotion with it to induce some emotion like fear or instill some positive emotion among people to stay away from that evil of drinking we can motivate you through speeches or literatures or videos or workshops or nukkar nataks or mohalla meetings to fill their minds and hearts with dreams they must set targets in their life they must have the motivation perseverance and discipline to meet those targets they must be guided by the thoughts of philosophers and moral thinkers he said dream 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 dreams transform into thoughts and thoughts results into action the youths can be motivated by these poets philosophers moral thinkers if you have read the poem of rudyard kipling by the title if if you haven't i recommend you do please it sets many conditions for the youth if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run yours is the earth and everything that's in it you must have heard this famous hindi song insaaf ke dagar pe bachchon dikhao chal ke ye desh hai tumhara neta tum hi ho kal ke oh youth walk on the path of justice and righteousness this country is yours you are the leader of tomorrow so this will take care of the part of emotion when you fill a child with dream he is more motivated and is more direct towards the goal the point being that you have to instill emotion somehow apart from just giving information of hazards of drinking the female members of the society can be organized and trained to explain the harmful impact of liquor using emotional intelligence when you carry out persuasion you have to understand the emotional state of others and deal with them with patience and wisdom Emotional intelligence is a very important part of your syllabus it has to be utilized whenever you are adopting any technique of persuasion the female members they become the mother and sisters in the family so within the institution of family they exert huge emotional influence and the state of bihar has become the dry state where prohibition prevails because of the effort of female members males can be motivated to provide better future to family by invoking values of love and compassion and then the explanatory videos and short films they are very powerful because they have the visuals they can be used to illustrate the physical mental psychological spiritual impact of liquor d addiction can be popularized by some role models who have successfully passed through the d addiction process and the infrastructure facility for the d addiction centers and successful integration of the youth in the economy after coming out of d addiction centers through some credit facility for entrepreneurship some programs where they are appreciated by the villagers these arrangements must be done by the local administration and then from the governance and administrative side many measures must be taken educational institutions they must be strengthened the fund teachers training the ict facility innovations like midday meals sports they all must be used to inculcate moral values among students and to engage students and the youth in education so it prepares them for the future and also in the present it keeps them away from nuisances like drinking and then you take up on things which are mentioned in the case like like they have mentioned agricultural facility is not up to the mark so irrigation facility things to increase productivity maybe maybe micro irrigation if other facilities of irrigation not possible these things must be adopted the local administration must see for ways and means to encourage the economy 
like for example food processing industry improving the marketing of the agricultural products these things must be looked into to improve agriculture and the other areas of economy may be handicrafts skill development apprenticeship program these must be encouraged for the youth bringing industry is important because agriculture may not be improved beyond a particular limit communal disharmony has been mentioned in the case so you will write something to maintain communal harmony through cooperation of local leaders politicians the senior members in the local administration for example you yourself is the sp in the case so all must try to spread the message of peace and it's also very important to train the officials to deal with a particular situation and not to look at it from the law and order perspective rather have a comprehensive approach to change the external situation that is causing the menace and also try to change the behavior of people from within human capital you all will agree is the greatest asset of a nation so degradation of the human capital by such illicit drinking by such huge incident must not be allowed this case was pretty simple they, they just asked what new approach you will adopt now i'm extending this case to add one more question you please in the comment section answer this part why the state must be proactive to solve the problem by new approach why is it an imperative for the state an absolute obligation in the state state must take special interest to solve the problem effectively why this is the editorial article from page number 6 energy conundrum the article highlights that india in the cop 26 meeting has set the target to increase the non fossil fuel capacity to 500 gigawatts and by 2030 50% of energy requirement of india will come from renewable energy and out of it 60% will come from solar energy apart from these targets you would also like to keep in mind that india will reduce 1 billion ton of total projected carbon emission between 2021 and 2030 and the carbon intensity of indian economy will be reduced by 45% and the net zero emission target india has set to be achieved in the year 2070 now coming to the solar energy part the article highlights that we are missing our targets in 2014 solar parks and ultra mega solar power project policy was launched initially we had the target of 20 solar parks later it was upgraded to 61 parks and total of 40000 megawatt capacity but by 2020 only about 1/4 10000 megawatt was commissioned similarly by the end of 2020 we had the target of having 1,75000 megawatt of renewable energy of which 1 lakh megawatt was to come from solar power but we had only about 61000 megawatt of solar energy installed so the article raises concerns concern for development of solar energy in india there are many challenges to the development of solar energy sector first of all it is expensive the cost of installation and long term maintenance it is expensive the projects gets delayed and that is why many of the solar power projects have been cancelled by the government the delay come mostly from the land issue because of multiple land title claims the supporting infrastructure for solar power or in general for renewable energy is also expensive and difficult to maintain for example the cable the huge batteries where the energy first gets stored installation of solar panels especially the solar parks they have many environmental issues for example in rajasthan there's a concern for great indian bursted you would know that there is absolute absence of domestic manufacturing of solar panels that makes the whole business of solar energy generation more expensive there is also a scarcity of land and that is why many of the solar projects now are offshore the financing mechanism for solar energy projects is also weak the specialized funds like national clean energy and environment fund exist but the seed funding mechanism for solar project is not very robust some of the projects have tried for green masala bonds but that is very very limited government has set the tariff for solar energy and that is low and that makes it really difficult to compete with the fossil fuel based energy generation there is also a question of waste management in the solar industry it is suggested that rather than purely solar energy hybrid parks with a mix of solar and wind it must be promoted the transmission of solar energy which is being generated at solar park to other parts of the country becomes expensive 
to make the energy transmission efficient and hence less expensive it is suggested that high voltage transmission line must be developed the automation of the solar park so the solar panel moves with the changing angle of inclination of the sunlight for that the digitization process must be done we must come up with efficient battery storage solutions involving lithium batteries the infrastructure and the maintenance of discoms must be improved so that the leakage and over and over emphasis on the solar sector must not be done there will be undue pressure on the sector to perform we have set the target of 60% of renewable energy target to be met by solar industry rather we must look for other non conventional sources like gas power hydrogen or hcng this is another important article from today's newspaper india has spelled out a strategy to fight climate change at cop26 you see india has batted for adaptation as a means for climate change action adaptation looks how to reduce negative effects and how to take any advantage of opportunities arising because of climate change if mitigation strategies fail to reach its target climate resilience will be key to lessen the impact of climate change so anyhow adaptation has to be there and india with other developing countries focuses on adaptation more than mitigation because in india there is need of development the 12th five year plan of india called for faster sustainable and more inclusive growth growth is important for a developing country like india india's per capita gdp is around 1965 dollar the global average is 10000 per capita energy consumption of india is 1/5 of global average and per capita energy consumption is an indicator of level of development and standard of living around 300 million people in india do not have access to electricity 55% of households are living in mud or semi concrete households as per the 2011 census the need for employment is increasing and hence the need of industrialization there is a target for doubling the farmers income and all these things cannot happen without pushing up the engine of growth so growth is required and hence we look for adaptation techniques so it has been spelled down by india that we must make adaptation a core part of our development policies and projects prime minister has mentioned about various schemes like nal se jal there has been mention of clean ujwala yojana there also has been mention of clean india mission these are developmental projects but not just developmental because they are adaptive in nature they bring environmental benefits and also enhances the quality of life of people just as the extension of adaptive measures there is climate resilient infrastructure development building india also has called for climate resilient infrastructure at cop26 from sources of drinking water to affordable housing they all need to be made resilient against climate change see infrastructure is developed for long term if we make it resilient it will prevent disasters not only for ourselves but also for future generation when a bridge is lost a telecom tower falls or power system fails or when a school is damaged the loss is not just the direct damage we should look at losses holistically indirect losses due to disruption of a small business and interrupted schooling of children may be several times higher we need the right accounting perspective for a holistic evaluation of the situation if we make our infrastructure resilient we will reduce both direct and indirect losses and protect the livelihood of millions that's the idea for climate resilient infrastructure and to implement the idea india also has pushed for a global coalition and greater participation in this global coalition that india has been leading with the help of uk that is coalition for disaster resilient infrastructure an important determinant of effectiveness of climate change action ideas is global financing In the spirit of climate justice it has been called by India that rich and developed countries provide at least 1 trillion dollar 1000 billion dollar in climate finance in assisting developing countries and the most vulnerable nations in their climate change actions India also has demanded that the rule book for Paris agreement better be concluded at COP26 itself The rule book for Paris Agreement will set it in motion by laying out the tools and processes to enable it in getting implemented fairly and properly. 
countries actually have agreed to finalize the Paris rule book at COP24 itself. That was held in Poland in 2018. But the rule book has not been finalized yet and India wants the rule book to be prepared by giving effect to the principle of equity and common but differentiated responsibilities and respective capabilities, recognizing the very different national circumstances of parties. Parties in UNFCCC vocabulary is used for member nations, and hence the meeting is called as Conference of Parties. Prime Minister Modi also has talked about cognitive change with regard to climate change action. And topics of climate change should be taught in schools. There's a need to include climate change adaptation policies in school syllabus to make the next generation well aware of the issues cognitively. This, in short, is the strategy of India for climate change action.